We welcome everybody here, and uh, we thank Lord Mayor for her generosity and uh, visiting the center and this opening center. We'd like to activate our role in the community, and uh, Lord Mayor will give an opening speech, and I, I give a few minutes talks to explain the role of this uh, new uh, Islamic Information Center. It's new of its kind in Ireland, the first, uh, uh, actually, Islamic Information Center in all Ireland. There's none you can find in, in, in Dublin or, or other places. Usually there's small mosque mainly, the rule of uh, the prayer mainly. But this is, we're trying to have a wider role, trying to bring the Muslim people uh, in close to the community and we'll bring the community as we manage to bring you and the bishop and all the other uh, politicians here and so we'll, we'll become close together as one unity. Uh, please you welcome uh, Lord Mayor will give an opening speech. Thank you. Good morning everybody and uh, just to say as Lord Mayor I'm delighted to be invited to come along and to open as Dr. Redwell said the first Islamic uh, information centre in the country and I was just listening if I could just say before I start that I was listening to the RTE news this morning and you know that the special prayer service that was taking place in uh, Dublin and there was over 2,000 people in attendance at that prayer service for Muhammad Tafik Sahar, who lost his wife and three children. And to have 2,000 people at the service there this morning obviously shows that, you know, the Islamic community, not alone in Cork, but in Dublin, is a broader community than just their own close community. And to, I suppose, to send the sympathies of the uh, city of Cork as well to uh, Muhammad Sahar on the loss of his wife and three children. Um, when I was asked to come along, um, maybe about last week, and I know that I knew this area, this building here, when it was a hospital doctor, and you know, an eye clinic and plastic surgery and all the different, uh, there was beds here, I think the last time I came into this building. But I think the ma main thing about this building is it's in a very strategic location. It's, if you like, it's on the gateway to the north side of the city. And uh, Dr. Radwin will tell me that there are approximately uh, 600 people uh, of the Islamic community living around this very vicinity here, and many of them being employees of Apple, uh, students of, uh, in UCC, attending our third level education institutions right across the city. And you know, in the broader uh, city, I think you're saying that there's uh, 3,000 of, of, of the Islamic community. So that's no small number of a population, and I think it's right and fitting that we should have an information centre somewhere strategically located. So, uh, just to say, um, the Bishop, Bishop Buckley, if there's anything good happening in the city, I usually meet him at the All-Ireland Finals, but you know, if there's anything good happening within the city, you know, he's an important figure, and I think it's a statement in itself as well to have Bishop Buckley here this morning, and thank you, and I know that Dr. Adam would be saying that himself. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, in the name of God. I'd like to thank again uh, Lord Mayor for her most generosity by coming here to visit us. And also uh, thank uh, Bishop Buckley. We met a lot of times in the, in the hospital. <laughs> it's a very familiar place to me. And uh, uh, just I'd like to, uh, the most important thing for this opening speech, I'd like to assure our neighbor, maybe they have some misunderstanding about the rule of this center. It's a big difference between the rule of this Islamic information center and the mosque. We, I, I'm a medical doctor. I made this project privately myself. It's not funded by anything. It's not donated by anybody. So it's completely, I'm completely responsible for everything here. This is the difference. It is a private project done by a medical doctor. My, my job to give uh, a good caring for the patient. And also, this is be implemented here. Good caring for the community, good caring for our neighbors. They are, we are they're very, very important, our neighbors to me. I've been here for 15 years. I care about them very much. I, I will not allow anything uh, to disturb them. Well, I'm happy to welcome uh, <laughs> Bishop Buckley. We, uh, we met a lot <laughs> for, for years and years. We, we, we very familiar places together. Thank you very much for Thank coming, Bishop. And just two words, Lord Mayor, and then yes, I want to say you know, we're just delighted to be here. And the Lord Mayor gave a very central talk. Lord Mayor has been very supportive of the North Side here in the city over the years. We have a big college up here at the North Side College, at the Fellows College. And we closed some time ago because the borders declined in numbers. And we're trying to convert it into a third level centre. And I'm sure some of your community may be studied there at this time, which it is now. But the Lord Mayor was very supportive of that project over the years. And it was a difficult moment at the time, but the Lord Mayor was extremely supportive of that centre. So I'm delighted to be here. The church, down through the years and down through the centuries, the present Pope, Pope Francis and Pope Benedict, are reaching out to the Muslim community all over the world. Yeah. And I studied philosophy in the university, 
and uh, you, 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 you all may have heard of the great philosophers Aristotle and Plato. Their writings and teachings were already lost only for a very ways and every city in the 12th century. It was there they preserved their, their readings and their publications and their research and so on and their documents and handed them over to the, war, to the worldwide. And they are now being used in universities and so on and to so the influence of the Muslim community. And here in Cork, as the Lord Mayor is aware, all the churches that tried to support with a very enjoyable function in the, in the City Hall last year, uh, the, towards the United Approach, mm -hmm. and your EMAC from Dublin. Yeah, yeah. Sophia, he was down for, saying hello. And he was down for, he was down for that very special occasion. And indeed, all the communities and the communities that are that are very aware of that, you know, Mr. Mr. Ford, Christian, and so on, the Polish community, the Indian community, we are part of chapters now to those communities here in Cork. And we encouraged them, and you, uh, it was mentioned earlier on, the integration in the, in the lives of the people here, as you were trying to do, do now the in the Chandler area, so that you would be part of the communities. Integration is so important today. And total integration will have been achieved when a, a Muslim or a poor or an Indian gets on the car for which is. So we got this one. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank And they, they did most of their education in Cork. When I first came, there was hardly anybody up here wearing a scarf. And I mean, I used to walk in the street and see hardly any Muslims. Now we see lots. And even now, this is the first centre like this open in Ireland. It's a brilliant place to come to. My kids now have some, they can meet other like minded Muslims here and learn more about their religion. I mean, I, they are taught at home, but sometimes they need more stimulation than that. They need to learn from an outer source as well. And like I say, there's not many places that, that are like this now, so something like this is so brilliant. And I mean, I'm an Irish person, an Irish citizen, so, and my kids, I mean, they're all Irish. I would consider them Irish. They would consider themselves Irish, even though they're mixed from my husband that's from Egypt. They would, if you ask them what country they're from, they'll say from Ireland. So it's so brilliant that Ireland is opening up for, for avenues like this where they can properly feel at home, that there is something there for them. I feel like this is great for integration of Muslims into the community um, and it's achieving a lot as it is now but for those of us like myself who work full time it would be great if it was open after 6 o'clock to give us a chance to come in and actually get some benefit from it. Um, it's benefiting the community as it, was, as it is now and it would be great if we could extend that even further. A lot of suspicion, mutual suspicion between Muslims and Christians is an awful lot of stereotypes. And Muslims have stereotypes about Christians, and Christians have stereotypes about Muslims. And having occasions like this when people actually come together and see each other as sort of ordinary human beings, that's when you can start breaking down these stereotypes. And I suppose having something like this is good for the city, again because it's an opportunity for people to see each other, mix with each other, get to know each other as neighbours. And like that's really what needs to happen for integration to happen, where people get to know each other as neighbours and understand each other and respect each other. And sure, they'll rub against each other and there'll be misunderstandings. But like having places like this, maybe having structures, and maybe there's a need for some structure for Muslims and Christians to come together and talk to each other so that if something does happen, then there's a way of dealing with it. And I think here we, in Ireland, have done extremely well and we have a huge opportunity because we don't have the historical baggage that other countries have. There has been no major explosion between Muslims and Christians or even immigrants uh, and Irish people. Uh, we don't have the historical baggage that other countries have. So we have an opportunity to build on something positive. The door is open, but it needs to be taken now. It needs to happen on the neighbourhood level, but there also needs to be a good bit of leadership uh, from religious leaders, both Muslim and Christian, uh, from political leaders, from councillors. They need to try and facilitate a process of integration and if that happens maybe you know we can do something very positive and we won't have the problems they've had in France and in England and in Germany between different religious communities. Uh.